hello everyone hello again hello 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 and so i so um, okay right so <laughs> my last video i started off wanting to speak about inspired action and then i went into meditation so now for real for real talking about inspired action and so the reason why I started off with the meditation is because, at least in my experience, a lot of my inspired action came from my meditations. Um, and so, like, when I would focus on an issue or focused on, you know, uh, particularly, like, how I wanted to move forward, move forward with a particular, I don't know, particular thought, particular action... Um, and I would meditate on that. Sometimes I would walk away having uh, inspired action. I needed to contact the particular person. I needed to reach out for whatever I needed to. Um, I don't know. I need, I needed to go visit a particular place or a store or whatever, whatever it was. Um, People think that, okay, I'm meditating, I'm visualizing, and that's it. That's it. I'm law of attraction. I'm putting the energy out there. I'm manifesting. And that's it. Putting the energy out there. And whatever it is, it's going to come back to me. You can put, you put it out there. You can absolutely visualize it. Those are all good things that you should be doing. Um, but you know, most likely you're not going to trip and fall over whatever it is you are trying to manifest. You are going to have to put in some action. You're going to have to put in some work in order to see this manifestation through. A lot of people don't realize that for the record, when I first started this whole journey, I did not realize that. I thought that, you know, put it out there and that's it. And I don't know, I'm gonna open up my front door and whatever it is that I want, it's just gonna be, it's just gonna be there on the stoop waiting for me to pick it up, bring it in the house. I mean, it's interesting when you see the obviousness of the truth, you know what I mean? It's like, I look it back at that, I'm just like, well, what the what the hell was wrong with you? My daughter, like I tell her then she's like, why would you think that? I don't know, but I thought it. And I legit waited, waited, okay? Took no inspired action, didn't think that I had to take any inspired action because I'm like, well, why would I? Isn't that the whole point to, um, and I wasn't, I was not meditating try to think. I was not, was I meditating? I really wasn't meditating at the time. Nothing hardcore. Um, I was definitely sitting in prayer. I was not sitting in, not, not really sitting in meditation the way like I would, like I sit in meditation now, but, but still doing the visualizing. I was doing the visualizing. I hadn't done so I hadn't started the secret yet um I'm trying to think of the timeline so I can give you the exact you know like what my thoughts were and so I wasn't meditating but I was visualizing I wasn't meditating the way I'm meditating now it was kind of a little bit different but I was definitely you know didn't know about the law of attraction or anything but kind of still in a real haphazard way, just kind of putting stuff out there into the universe. Um, I wasn't aware of, I, uh, I was starting to become aware of my journey. Wasn't, wasn't fully there yet. Not even by long, not even a little bit. Wasn't fully there yet. But, oh, I put it out there into the universe. I, you know, I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait. You know, like, like they say, you waiting on God. Meanwhile, God is waiting on you. Like you got to do something to go get it. And like, and I see it now. Like I, I remember, oh gosh, 
I was a manager and I just started and one of my staff, you know, she was like, you know, they passed me over for your position and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, well, I'm so sorry to hear that. Um, and I was like, well, why did you pass? Why did they pass you over for the position for, for this position? She's like, you know, I didn't have, they said I didn't have the qualifications. Uh, um, and I was like, oh, okay. So then what qualifications didn't you meet? Um, she's like, well, I only started in this industry, uh, I think it was like a year ago, needed five years in the industry. This is in healthcare, needed five years in the industry. And she didn't have her bachelor's. She had her, she had a high school diploma and she, they, she needed her bachelor's as a minimum requirement. And so I'm like, well, they pay for your education. So why don't you go get your bachelor's while you're putting in the time to get the time so that you can move, so you can be promoted into something else. Um, while you're putting in your time, I'm like, go get your bachelor's because by the time you finish your bachelor's, um, and that's assuming that she would go full time, right? While you're getting your bachelor's, then you can, you would have put in the time, you, have, you would have met the minimum requirement um, to be promoted within the department uh, or even if it's going to another department, but you would have put in your time and you would have met the minimum educational requirements. And I was like, you know, I will sign off on it. That's not a big deal. I'm a huge fan of education. And I'm like, I would sign off on it. Um, but yeah, I was like, that's what you should absolutely do. Cause it's not like you're going to get your bachelor's tomorrow. Um, never did it. When I told her that she's kind of looked at me like and she never did it she's like oh that's so great like she looked at me but then she's like you know it's so great but yeah i'm gonna totally do that never did it um and i would remind her every so often because it'll pop into my head oh yeah, yeah, yeah no 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 i'm gonna do it i'm gonna do it i'm gonna do it well then here's the deal <sighs> for all of you out there if you don't take the inspired action that you need to take, if you don't prepare yourself, because the other piece of that inspired action is also preparing yourself for the opportunity to come. You know, if you don't prepare yourself for the opportunity to come, if you don't take inspired action, then whatever it is you think you want, you don't want. I promise you that. You don't want it because it doesn't make a difference how hard you think the thing is. If you want it, you already know you're not gonna make any excuses. Think about the things that you have wanted in your life, which it, which was just no small feat to get, but you got it, okay? You probably had to go over the river and through the woods to get this thing, but you got it, right? It may have taken you six months, a year, two years, but you got it. So if you're saying that you want something, but you're not willing to go do what you need to do in order to go get the thing, then you don't want it. And you have to be honest with yourself with that. You know, you maybe it's not for you or maybe it's not for you right now. And you need to be honest with yourself about it as opposed to being half-assed about it and then saying, well, you know, this manifestation, um, visualization, law of attraction thing doesn't work. But if you are really, you know, wishy-washy about what you want and then on top of everything, you're not doing what you need to do in order to go get the thing that you want, then what do you think is going to happen? Whatever you are putting out there to the universe, the universe is going to give it back to you. So if you're, you know, iffy about it, then kind of, sort of, maybe you want it and you're not really clear, but you know, then that's what you're going to get. You're not doing the thing you need to do in order to go get it, then that's what you're going to get. You know, nothing. You're not going to get all, you're going to get a whole lot of nothing is what you're going to get. And then what that's going to do is going to reinforce in your mind. It will reinforce that, you know what? This stuff doesn't work. I'm not going to do it. 
Meanwhile, you're not looking at yourself, which is the which is the issue. You're not looking at yourself because you're not willing to go do what you need to do. You know, then we start going into the realm of self-sabotage. And so why aren't you doing what you need to do? Why, you know, once you realize you're doing this, take the time to sit down and, and have a honest conversation with yourself. Have a honest conversation with yourself and, well, why don't I really want it? And, and you know, some of the hardest conversations are with yourself. Be honest with yourself. No matter how hard it is. It's just, conversation is just between you and God. That's it. You, yourself, and God. And gain an understanding. Well, why don't I want this? Well, why don't you want it? Is Do you feel like it's too hard? Do you feel like it's not your time right now? Is it what you really want? Are you doing something that other people think you should? Are you doing what other people think you should do as opposed to what you want to do? Why don't you want it? And why are you setting yourself up for failure? Because that's what you would be doing. Self-sabotage is just... You, all, you, all you're doing is setting yourself up for failure. And then when you do fail, we go back to, well, it's not for me. I told you that this isn't it. You know, this meditation or this manifestation stuff doesn't work. You know, and the excuse, the excuse, the excuse, and it gives you a reason to be comfortable where you are. Well, there's no reason for me to get better than this, to do better than this. I can't do better than this because um, because every time I try, it, it, it I, I fail. There's a problem, there are obstacles, there's this, there's that. So you start making all of these excuses as opposed to, as opposed to following what you need to do in order to make it happen. If you notice that you're constantly having that conversation with yourself where mm, if you notice that outside forces, the perception, notice that outside forces are not assisting you in getting what you want, then you need to stop and ask the question, First, you need to stop and realize that it's not the outside forces, it's you. And you need to stop and ask the question, why am I doing this? Self-sabotage is real and self-sabotage self is shady AF, all right? It is shady because you will think that it's, you know, it's all these other people, it's all these other things, it's not you. Meanwhile, you're the one setting yourself up you're the one that's doing the self-sabotage and you are so blind to what's happening that you don't even realize that you're the one setting yourself up for the self-sabotage and the self-sabotage is um, originating from you. Self-sabotage is a mofo. And when I realized that I was doing it, every time something went wrong, I had to stop and I had to like, what could I have done better? What was I supposed to do? Am I self-sabotaging myself? If I am, why am I self-sabotaging myself? Is this something that I really want? Is this what I'm supposed to? And if we go past, you know, it's because I, I, I stop saying, is this what I'm supposed to have? Because if you're creating your, your own universe, it's neither, that's neither here nor there. You know, the question is, is this something that I really want? Because people will say as part of them, as part of them, being comfortable where they're at is that, oh, well, you know, it wasn't meant for me. BS. If you want it, it's meant for you. Else you would not have had the thought. The problem is you. What do you need to do in order to get where you need to go? Are you willing to traverse all obstacles in your path, because you will get obstacles. Just because you have a thought 
and you've meditated on it and you are putting the energy out there and you're doing all just because you're doing that stuff you know even when you have the divine the divine even when you have the um inspired action make no mistake you will come across obstacles the universe will test you how badly do you want this we're going to find out you know you were going down path a we're going to we're going to block that off are you willing are you going to be willing to say screw it and not allow that to stop you but go down B. Are you gonna find an, a way around that, a way to circumvent? Because there's always a way around. You know, what needs to happen for you to move past this obstacle? Or are you going to say, well, mm, yeah, mm, this, I told you it wasn't meant for me because it's an obstacle and you know, that popped up and so now I can't get it because, <sighs> pick an excuse. Blah, 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 blah. And if you are willing to, willing to be deterred by an obstacle, by a obstacle, an obstacle, one obstacle, is this something that you really want? And it's perfectly fine to say no. It's perfectly fine to say, you know what? I'm content where I'm at. I, And some people are, and there's nothing wrong with that. Some people are content where they are. That is fine. What I'm saying is, is that be honest with yourself about it so that you are not going through the motions, going through the rigmarole, and coming out on the other end even more miserable, more cynical, more depressed than when you started. All of this stuff that I'm talking about, you have to be honest with yourself. None of this stuff, none of this stuff works the way you want it to work if you are not honest with yourself. Something as simple as, I don't want to, me personally, I don't want to work in an office anymore. This is when I was doing the nine to five thing. I don't want to work in an office anymore. I need to somehow, and again, they, and, and at that point, work from home jobs, this work from home jobs still were, it was not a thing, but it was, it was becoming a thing. It was starting, it was starting to build that momentum. Um, so there were actual work from home jobs, but you know, you would have to come into the office like once a day, once a day, you have to come into the office once a week or once every two weeks, you know, that's what it was. It wasn't a straight work from home. You know, there was no HQ. Don't even know what the office looks like. It was not that it was, you know, still kind of coming to office once a week or whatever. When I made the decision to work from home, I'm like, all right, I needed to stick to that decision and I needed to stop applying for jobs where I had to be in the office because then at that point I'm giving the universe mixed signals. Um, and all of a sudden, where I wouldn't get it before, not that I really wouldn't get it before, it was, and because in the past I applied for both, but I was just really getting more in-office stuff, which I took. Um, but then it started coming where it was me, it was all, it was all work from home, and it, but it was me having to be confident, um, not confident, but had to, well, yeah, confident in the decision that I made, that I, I wanna work from home and I'm only going to, and it wasn't that, but more saying that I'm only going to apply from work for work from home jobs and not getting anxious and impatient and saying, screw it. I'm just going to apply for all of them, staying on my path and being confident in my decision and saying, this is all I'm going to apply for. And granted, I'm not getting a whole lot of, I'm not getting as much, um, 
I'm not getting as much feedback as I would have gotten if I had gone the more traditional route and picked an in-office and applied for in-office positions. I'm getting less traffic because it's, it, and it's, it, I'm, it's less, it, it was, it's less work from home jobs, right? And I've, I've narrowed the, I've, I've narrowed that pool so much where, you know, instead of getting, you know, 10 interviews a week, I'm maybe getting two or three interviews a week because I'm now only going for work from home jobs and not getting scared off by that and staying the course no matter what. And that's what I did. I ended, I ended up getting a work from home job. Um, I had to travel once a week to the office, which was fine. Um, it wasn't a big deal. Um, but staying on your course and being confident in your decision, which is the other piece of it to be confident in your decision, understand that um, because you're narrowing the field and you're now focused on this one thing that you are not going to get as much feedback as you're used to as if you were casting a wider net. Focus on this one thing so your sphere is going to now, your sphere of feedback and response is going to, you know, it's going to shrink considerably. Don't let that scare you. That's what's supposed to happen. That's what's going to happen. So don't let that scare you. Uh, I would tell you sometimes it still makes me anxious and I, and I have to remind myself, right, that's what's supposed to happen because you are narrowing, you, you, you know, you are narrowing the field. So that's what's supposed to happen. Your, your response is going to be narrowed as well. It's going to shrink down as well. Um, stay the course and be confident in that. And that's part of the, the inspired action as well because the inspired action is going to give you a specific set of movements, a, a, a specific thing to do. This is what you need to do. That's it, period. That's what you need to do. And so you can easily doubt yourself when you are when you are going down the path of inspired action because you're not going to get the response you're accustomed to getting. Things are not going to look the way you're used to them looking. Um, it's going to be completely different. You, you will not have a point of reference you can easily get freaked out because of all of these things. Don't let it freak you out. Stay the course. Um, and you won't see the fruits of your labor until you get to the other end of that inspired action. But that inspired action has narrowed the field so much that your response or your feedback or your whatever, it's going to be minimal, but the feedback that you do get, the interest that you do get, the next step that you do get will help to move you closer and closer to what you want. Um, have no expect, it's gonna be weird to say like, I would say paint broad strokes in terms of what you need the thing to look like or, Paint the broad strokes in what you need the thing to look like. And I'm saying that because you want to be flexible enough to accept the thing as it's present, as the universe presents it to you, because you will get it, but it may look different than what you originally thought because the universe is going to give it to you the way you need it, not the way you want it, which are two different things. Because that manifestation is not the end all be all more often than not, it's just one step in a series of steps. You just may not realize it. So it's setting you up for the next thing. You just don't realize it at the time. But these are all conversations that you need to have with yourself. You know, do you want this thing? Are you willing to do what it takes? If you don't want it, that's fine. And if you want it, then hey, balls to the wall and move forward and go get it. Um, and follow, follow the path that's being laid out for you in order to help you get what you want via inspired action. And just, and do not let any obstacles deter you from what it is that you want. Remember obstacles, adjust opportunities in disguise. That's it.
So don't be fooled by obstacles. They really don't exist. Whether you realize it or not, they're, they're there to help you. Even though it doesn't feel like that at the time, but they're there to help you. At any rate, um, remember to like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and have you ever had any inspired actions that you followed? And you know, if you follow those inspired actions to their conclusion, then did that, whatever it was, pan out the way you thought it was going to pan out? You know, was it worth following that inspired action? Definitely leave a comment below, let me know. Um, I'm definitely, I'm interested to know, you know, what inspired actions you've taken in order to move forward in your, in your life and in your manifestations. Bye.